All right, it's time for episode 19 of the Pod EC. This week's topic is going to be improvised, and whatever the title and the clickbait is that Frank have come up with is uh, hopefully really enticing. So welcome to everybody who's been baited by that. Um, what's everyone been up to? Dorky, what have you been up to the last last few days? Oh, I've just been doing the PTR keys of the keys that I've already done. <laughs> well, yeah, I've also just been <laughs> I've also just been following. What a way to what a way to put it. <laughs> The SLD stuff that's been happening. I don't know, not a whole lot. I've just been kind of chilling. Waiting for Alpha. So you've been chatting, basically. So, like, you've been you've been just observing what's been happening with Season of Discovery. Because I think none of us play Season of Discovery, right? Yeah, like I have a bunch of friends who play. I, I kind of wanted to play. Like, I, I'm honestly getting a little bit of FOMO. Like, I would have wanted to just, like, mess around in SLD with some friends. Since nothing's really happening in retail. But uh, yeah, I, like I have like a level twenty-two character or something. That's about it. Oh, yeah, I I can't get into it for whatever reason. It's just it's it's the gameplay thing, you know. Like like you play, and we can maybe talk about this later. But like the everyone plays retail and classic for like very different reasons, and retail for me is like all about the gameplay, and that gameplay just isn't there in classics, and and zero nostalgia value for me. So that doesn't transfer over and add that that hype. Because we were actually just a little, little bit of a tangent for people who are listening to this. We actually were thinking about talking about Season of Discovery for a large portion of today's podcast. And we were like, man, who would be just a great podcast guest to talk about this? Because we didn't want to do a whole huge thing on it without any of us actually playing it, right? Because apparently it's been kind of divisive. Um, but we couldn't really find anyone. We were it was, it was really short notice, but like we couldn't really find anyone. Who, who do you guys want to hear from us? Maybe put that in the comments. If we were to actually get a little check-in on season of discovery next week or something if you guys would know anybody but um yeah I, I got a little bit of fomo i like randomly turned on twitch and i saw people doing the sunken temple raid and they were wiping and i like i was like okay like i don't know if like there's bosses that are actually somewhat interesting but then it was i heard it was just like a health thing right i don't know dorky if you looked at that like 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 the bosses are doing two things but they just have a ton of health is that the the the, the deal yeah, it's basically like a numbers issue. The mechanics are like super simple, but they overtuned it a little bit, which there were some pretty big adjustments this week. Well, I mean, pretty much like right after it came out. Yeah, I'm not sure if you saw, but the biggest adjustment was they nerfed the HP by 50%, I believe. Basically, the entire raid, there were trash mobs that had more HP than like Ragnaros, an end raid boss. So, I mean, I there's something you know what that reminds me of. That reminds me of some some Razageth ads, <laughs> where you're like, okay, these have literally twice as much health as like is possible to do. I wonder if that is like a a product of, you know, you don't do any testing on this stuff. You don't. There's all these runes. Who knows how many they'll have? Maybe this was supposed to be tuned to be completed weeks later with more gear, or maybe they just missed the mark. But I wonder if how much that has to do with them not actually testing it right. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's been a lot of yeah. community sentiments about like, was P3 rushed or like, like what exactly happened? Because Phase Two was kind of lackluster compared to Phase One, and they were probably just like looking to push some content out. That's been like the speculation going on. We did it, it, so it did. It came out Part Three came out faster than like the difference between One and Two. Uh, that I don't know, but it felt like, you know, they, they just needed to get something out quick because it was getting really stale. Like, pretty much people were just getting straight into the point of raid logging when they got to P2. P2 definitely didn't have, like, the same retention as P1. Okay, well, so we don't have a great guess for this. I just want to point out none of us play. But, like, Dorky is a hardcore Twitch chatter. So, like, what, what have you observed that... Because, like, there's been a little bit of you know, people saying, oh, well, this is missing the spirit of classic and stuff. But like, obviously, classic plus is literally like innovating on classic. Like, can you can you tell why that that opinion is being had? I think that's the opinion. So I think I think there's like multiple parts to this. First is most people would agree that the first phase was just the best phase, mostly because it was new, it was fresh. And not that P2 and P3 weren't fresh. It was more that 
Well, I mean, they were, they were new, but they weren't fresh because it's just like they're doing the same idea, but it's just like a little bit adding more on top of it. And they didn't have things that would transform your classes as much. Because like when P when the first phase came out, everyone was like hyped for Warlock tank and like, you know, Rogue tank and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't anything really like that for the second and third phase. The second and third phase were more along like, all right, let's add some cat abilities or no, not cat abilities, but like Raffle oh. King abilities to some of these specs. And it was just like, you know, more of the same. So instead of their... Than like something exciting and new. Yeah, instead of them coming up with a, a warrior spellcaster or some crazy weird shit like that that's unexpected, it's just like they're elaborating and building on the weird little spec combinations they came out with at the beginning, is what you're saying. Right, right, right. But, okay. So that, so that was like something small, but also, like you know, like obviously P1 would be more interesting because the early parts of leveling in Classic is so much more exciting than the later parts. It lets you experiment with like more alts and... People generally enjoy playing the 1 to 25 experience more than the later parts. But the bigger issue that happened with P3 specifically was the addition of Nightmare Incursions that mm. had so much drama behind it. Well, what, what is a Nightmare it's, it's, Incursion? What does that mean? Um, so I don't know what exactly. It is. I, from what I understand, it's like some event. It's, you go to some location and you're just like doing this event over and over and over. You're basically just like repeating this one thing, like and it a gives you... spirit bloom or whatever those are called. And the... yeah, 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 yeah. It's basically like some like retail type of like event. Okay. That you're just doing with a group, and it's so efficient that people were getting insane amount of gold and exp per hour. Like when it first came out, when P3 first came out, people were getting to level fifty in anywhere between like six to eight hours, I believe. Oh. And so. So it's kind of like island and expeditions, the, right? Like yeah, and that and the and they end up nerfing it too. So that, that was the worst part. So that was like the part one of people getting real pissed because basically, if you were not up playing for like six to eight hours straight, you basically got super fomoed out of this massive gold and exp gain. Okay. Because from what I heard, people were making like a thousand gold, which is like a crap ton of gold in classic. People would spend like weeks of doing actual content in p2 well maybe not actual content but like you know people would be doing their gold making methods of like farming fishing whatever the hell and it would take them weeks to get that much gold but they it essentially ruined the economy and players were just getting straight to low 50 in what should take like what i don't know a week or two normally people would take it's like you missed a leveling exploit or something in yeah yeah exactly oh, yeah. you missed a leveling exploit that people were taking advantage of and it was just not what players wanted because like uh, play players want to go around the world and you know like doing what they did in classic to level up right like normally 40 to 50 would take much longer than six to eight hours it'd be like something where you're like grinding different zones and you're out in the world but mm -hmm. that's where they really missed the essence of Classic, at least from what I've gathered. I mean, I'm not that much of a Classic player, but I know back when Growl was playing hardcore, they, he would spend, like, at least multiple days of, like, grinding for many hours just to get to 50. But, yeah, they, they essentially eliminated that entire whole section of leveling, and people, people got straight to level 50. People were making, like, a 1,000 gold, and... A lot of classic players were not happy with it. I mean, that totally makes sense. Like, I, like it makes me think of Island Expeditions. Right? Like, if you remember why people really hated Island Expeditions, it was because you had to do them. Like, they were just the most efficient way to get Azerite power, right? So, like, maybe Nightmare Incursions are fine content. It's a fine addition thing to try. But, like, the fact that you had to do them because they're so efficient is like, oh, well, you just have to do this thing. Maybe, maybe that doesn't work. But then also it's like the Skarn problem, right? Where, like, if you didn't kill Skarn and do that three, five tank strat or whatever on that Wednesday or Thursday and you were raiding later that week, you just were stuck in hell of killing that boss in a harder version for the next little bit. So, like, if you missed that, remember how mad people got if they missed that train, right? Um, and then you just, it's, that's, like, the thing with the gold, right? Like, some people are just loaded with gold now, and if you just didn't happen to be playing at that time, it's just not, like, how do you fix that if you're Blizzard side, like, so maybe the whole idea of this is why people don't like the season as much in uh, Season of Discovery or this this part is because it just seems like it was not made well, right? 
the raid was not tuned right the how much golden experience you got totally missed the mark right it just seemed so that's where it all comes back together where you're saying that everyone feels like it was released too early just because it seems unfinished yeah exactly i posted this picture too which pretty much sums up the experience like if there were a bunch of people who were tryharding on the first day just like playing non-stop and they figured out the incursions were insane they got to reap all the benefits and it was literally nerfed the very next day is Frank gonna put this picture yep. on the on the thing? I, I think it's a good picture to put. <laughs> Surely he will. Yeah. It's... What a fucking meme. Yeah. That's God. good. Well, it does actually make me think of something with retail. So, someone in my chat actually asked me this the other day, and it didn't really click until you started talking about this as to why they even asked me this. But they said, Max, like, how would you feel if they made leveling longer in retail? And I didn't even answer the question, but I just asked my chat. I'm like, guys, imagine a new retail expansion came out and instead of leveling from 70 to 80 or whatever in eight hours, it was just 16, just double, right? Like, how would you guys feel about that? And it was overwhelmingly negative. It was like, I mean, no, like the whole point of retail is to like to, to play at max level and leveling isn't just very interesting. And that does show a very distinct difference. I think between the two games, like classic is all about that, like old school mentality of grinding and long hours into getting something and it's almost like you play the game for the journey of getting somewhere. You don't play the game to be at max level, really. Uh, it's more like what you remember, what you what you remember for the, through nostalgia fondly, but also just like going back and doing it. You're like, you're looking forward to getting all 20 of those quests in Stranglethorn Vale or whatever, right? Like, like that's just something that's part of it. But in retail, it seems like you play retail now to play the end game, like, like the gameplay and the actual, I think JB summarized it good in a tweet recently where it was like, you just can't do anything in, there's no game that has PVE team gameplay like WoW does, right? And like, so if you like that, that's what you play this game for. Some people play it for PVP. Uh, but I just want to ask you guys, what, how would you feel about leveling in retail? Like, could you make leveling cool and make it twice as long? How do you guys feel about that? I don't think so. I, I think what they've got in Dragonflight is the best way of doing this where there are just story quests that you can do at max level. Like they've had these popping all throughout the expansion. Every single little patch has had, you know, a little, uh, little quest or whatever, the tears guard, all these different, the blue dragon flight quests or whatever. And so like, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, you can do it. And you're not getting levels for it. But I think fundamentally, if we were to go back to a classic era, like the thing about classic was there were seven different zones you could go to, right. To get XP. Obviously some of them were a little bit lower than you should be. And some of them were a little higher than you should be sure. But like, you could go quest in the Barrens or you could quest in, you know, Silver Pine Forest or whatever. And either way, you were getting the same XP towards the level. And then, you know, turning in a big set of quests that was efficient for XP felt good for that reason. Retail just doesn't work like that. Like, retail, you complete the Waking Stories, the Waking Shores quest lines, and then you complete the Onaran Plains quest line right on your first character. You you have to, yeah. it's like a linear quest line that you're completing. And the XP in Shadowlands, it was completely irrelevant. Like, in Shadowlands, if you hit max level, but you hadn't finished the Reverend Death campaign yet. You had to go back and finish the Reverend Death campaign. Yeah, right? So yeah. Uh, the level is just an entirely made up number next to your character. Um, could they revisit that and like make an expansion that just had, you know, zones with like legitimate optional quests all the way through. And they were like, Hey, go into this zone, get 10 levels, however you want. We don't care. Um, yeah, they could, they kind of did that. I guess back in Legion, it was kind of like that. Still, you, you could skip, uh, around a little bit, although I think you ended up needing to do a lot of the storyline quests anyway. Um, I don't know. Well, I, do I think it, I don't think it would be better. I don't, I don't think it would be better to do, you know, like, no matter how long they made it, you would still be, you would feel a lot of players would just grind it out in those first few days, right? So the longer they make that process, the more powerful they make, first of all, that pre-order three-day thing, which I'm not a fan of, but... Um, Same is coming with the next expansion, but also just like the more they make it a, you know, a hardcore grind thing in the first week that we can kind of already do that, right? Like that kind of already happened in Dragonflight with the super rares and the Cobalt Assembly and the Obsidian Citadel and stuff if you wanted it to, but at least all that was pretty small potatoes. Like if, if it was a case of I need to play for 30 hours week one so I can hit my first week of M0 reset, um, that would be pretty cringe, I think. What do you think so I'm actually curious. I have a question for you guys. What expansion was actually your favorite for leveling? Oh, great question. Um, 
I want to say Legion. I think so as well. Um, and I really Log think was, good too. was that the one where you could kind of start in any zone? Was that was that yeah. the Legion thing? You pick whichever of the four zones you wanted. Um, yeah. So, the, and I'm gonna say the only because I'm I'm very much on the side of like I'm here for end game, right? Like I I don't find any interest in leveling. I never have in classic or uh, retail. Uh, and I just remember that Legion was like the first expansion where it was really seamless to level. Like it seemed like there was always this massive issue. I mean, obviously Wad had an awful launch with that, but like just having a seamless leveling experience where nothing went wrong. And I think part of that was because you could start in each zone uh, kind of felt good. But that's the only reason why it wasn't like I necessarily enjoyed questing because I just don't. I know a lot of people don't feel that way, but that's just how I am. What about you? Uh, I don't know. I. I... I remember Warlords of Draenor leveling pretty fondly. I don't actually remember what the experience was like, but it, just like something about like I I just remember like off top of my head, Warlords of Draenor being pretty enjoyable. Uh, aside from that, I guess like Legion might be the next best one. Legion or Dragonflight. But why but do it doesn't remember... like don't they all feel the same since Legion? Like nah, I feel like the level. Not... Oh, it, there's okay. definitely like. Okay, well, so like BFA was like the obvious one where it felt bad because like, you know you lost your legendary powers as you leveled and uh, oh god that sucked yeah some of the zones just time. straight up sucked right and uh, I would say Shadowlands kind of sucked too like I didn't really like traversing Revendreth mm -hmm. it felt kind of like not good but uh, Dragonflight was like obviously one of the nicer ones because dragon riding was awesome and being able to go from zone to zone and Legion just gave like really good vibes. I know Legion, Stormheim, and High Mountain kind of sucked because of like all the verticality and trying to like you know go up and down with no flying. But yeah, maybe it's just Warlords of Draenor just because of like how how uh, what's the word non oppressive it was in a way. Like I know it was just leveling, but like sometimes it feels really bad when you have like all these obstacles in your way. I just want leveling to be as seamless as possible. Yeah, I mean, when I started playing this game back in TBC, like, I did enjoy the process of going from 1 to 70 the slow way. And I did that again once when Classic came out. Like, I leveled the slow way another time, even when there was a boost to 60. I think when TBC came out, I still leveled, the you know, the old way. And that's, like, something that I have the capacity to enjoy still. But I certainly wouldn't if it was brought back to retail, right? Like, the way that I'm playing retail right now is a very different thing where I wouldn't be able to like stop and smell the roses on the leveling process at all. I wouldn't be able to like appreciate a 14 quest turn in all, all at the same time. Cause that just wouldn't be efficient. You wouldn't be doing it that way. Right. You'd, you wouldn't be optimizing for that. You'd be following Azeroth autopilot or whatever, and uh, trying to get there <laughs> fast enough so that you yeah, could do another character in that reset or whatever, or like uh, you could get your dungeons done at the same time as the rest of your guild or that kind of thing. So I don't know. Well, I, mean, I will say though, would there, are, like, would it be better for the is this one of those things where it's like we're we're out of touch and the majority of people would actually enjoy that yeah Maybe, i kind of want to transition into that after dorky says what he needs to say so, i do know that there are a lot of people like a surprising amount of people that just level characters for fun mm -hmm. it, it kind of like yeah. blows my mind but like i'm like i remember asking this to my chat once right like i was just like literally just i think it was during blizzcon when they were talking about increasing the amount of character slots you can have because i remember he said it was like some number i don't know how much it is right now it's like what 20 maybe like 20 and they're all like upping to like some amount and i'm like man who the hell even has 20 characters and i had so many people in my chat they were like what the hell i do i have like 50 characters or whatever I'm... and that kind yeah. of blew my mind for a second feel like i had like a streamer moment or like a i'm a professional player kind of moment where i'm like what the fuck like what are these guys doing leveling all these characters but like apparently that's just what people do like sometimes People just like enjoy leveling alts and yeah, I that's, don't like actually a thing. Yeah, but like I, I get it up to the like one of every class. The thing that I don't get with that, and I would need to hear from one of them as the rationale as to why, is why would you level a second of fifty characters? Why would you level a second, third, fourth, fifth of a class you already have? That's the so thing that I just think... totally blows my mind. Yeah, I think it's for like farming mounts and stuff. Like you know how you have to have okay that I get that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think it's bad, and they just, like, enjoy leveling alts. But, yeah, I think, like, they probably could have something where they have a better leveling process from 1 to max level, or, like, 1 to current expansion. 
Like, I, I completely agree with Dranos with the whole, like, if you're playing in the current expansion, it shouldn't be long leveling. I think whatever they have right now is fine. Like, maybe they could make it a tiny bit longer, make it, like, 15 hours instead of uh, 10 hours or however much it is right now. But I do feel like for brand new players, like people who have literally never touched a game before and don't know shit about World of Warcraft, I do feel like they should have the option to have a more drawn out, like actual progression from one to current expansion. Well, because that, that part does feel lacking. Like, I don't know. It just feels kind of bad where like someone who's like completely new to the game, they just like boost the max level character and they don't know crap about their buttons. They're just like thrown in there with their entire talent tree. And they have like all these abilities. They like don't understand the basic concepts of the game with like interrupts and just like pressing your buttons and you know, like all that. Right. So I do feel like they could have some type of progression from one to current expansion. And then like after you get to the current expansion, then just keep that normal. Well, what about, okay. So this is the reason why we're talking about this is like, it's been brought up. Uh, I want to bring up a tweet from uh, T&E and then a reply from JB to like give some context to this. Um, so I'll just read the tweet. I'm sure Frank got it on screen. None of you want to hear this, but the thing you need to do to make retail WoW a better experience for new players is to make the leveling slow, open, and not worry about if they get to end game or not. Um, so just just in general, I, when we were talking earlier about would you want leveling to be longer, wouldn't you kind of have to reimagine what leveling is to make that argument firmly like uh for example if you're doing what we do which is just like try to efficiently do all three or four quests stacked up against each other and then like aoe down a million mobs and hope you're alone so other people aren't stealing your tags and all that stuff like isn't it different isn't it more like classic leveling where the mobs are way way harder and you have to pull them a little bit slower and because of that like that that gives is that is that part of why people like leveling in classic is that feeling that your power level compared to Sorry, my mic was bad. Uh, your power level compared to the average small mob that you're looking at is just way higher in retail than it is in classic. You feel like a god all the time. You're way stronger than all these mobs. Like, is that something that maybe that could change? Because uh, obviously people feel differently about this. You have a JB response, which is I would pay $500 every expansion to skip leveling my characters. I, I'm not at that far gone. I'm like, okay, doing the first time <laughs> like I level. I maybe if, if I just think maybe the second time and third and fourth time you level, it should just be infinitely faster. Like there's nothing novel about doing it twice kind of thing, but I don't know if I really have much of an opinion on how long the first time should be, but whether it's for new players or a new expansion, you know, when you're asking the, you, would you rather level longer? You're kind of asking for leveling to feel a lot different than it does now. And would that be something appreciated? Like if they release next expansion and it takes twice as long to level and it's way, way harder. That's what the classic community has. And they like that is that, is that something that would work in retail? So I don't think it's just the speed of leveling, as, as you mentioned. Like it's really more about your character feeling progression, like feeling meaningful progression, feeling like every level you get, you're like actually getting stronger. The leveling gear actually mattering as you go up, and having content to look forward to on the way up. So whether that is like dungeons that you can be challenged by, or raids you can be challenged by. Or, you know, like, exploring more parts of the world. Well, and, you know, like, obviously obtaining new abilities on classes, like, feels super good. Don't I, you I think do that right now, though, it... with the class trees? Like, if you're if you're leveling from a low level or at a high level, you you feel that class and spec tree point every time you level, right? Is it just that it's too fast, so you don't have enough time to, like, intake that information? I, I think it's a little bit of a that, and also just there's, like, nothing to really use that progression on if that makes any sense because like everything is just kind of easy right like it's not like you having that extra point really matters or you know doing the next quest or doing the next dungeon yeah you know, there's got to be like some what of like a challenge of like oh man like i got this now i can just like crush this next part that was Instead definitely just, something like, in classic right where it's like oh i'm level 16 oh this area has like level 18 harpies that are messing me up i'll come back when i'm level 19 and i'll mess them up right and it's like yeah, you know, or like when you upgrades. get a cool ability and then you can like use it on that and it feels pretty good. Yeah, or, or you like struggle through an area that you're under leveled relative to. Retail definitely doesn't have any of that, right? Because the whole world just like scales up with you as you're going. Leveling doesn't, doesn't even oh, make that, you... Oh, yeah, that too. That's Is like that bad? That's like another thing too. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's like been a topic for a lot of games actually. Like not just World of Warcraft. The whole uh, content scaling with you does feel pretty bad in a lot of ways. 
Yeah, kind like of on one hand, the RPG, right? Like, yeah, like exactly, imagine yeah, an like Elden Ring. Everything's just the same. Imagine an Elden Ring if you go right into Cadrill or whatever, and like that feeling of you getting absolutely slaughtered the first time you go there. But imagine it just if you got there first, it scaled with you. That would just be a signal. I mean, yeah, Elden Ring awful. to WoW is isn't the best example, but like it doesn't make certain zones feel crazy difficult because they're all the exact difficulty they you know in quotes should be when you get there. You know. Right, I mean, like, the RPG element is still there. I remember Diablo 4 actually had this exact problem. Like, I don't know if you oh, guys yeah. were paying yep. attention to that at the beginning of D4 launch. People had this exact criticism talking about how, like, man, like, this is so weird. I'm just kind of, like, going through the entire way of Diablo 4 campaign, and everything just feels the same. There's yeah. no, I went into the wrong zone, and, like, I'm having, I'm challenging really hard mobs, or, like, I go back into the same zone, and I'm not even killing them, them super quick, because... Part of the appeal, too, is, like, when you get to a certain point, right? Like, say you're level 20 with super OP skills. You should be able to just, like, completely destroy level 15 mobs, and that feels pretty good. But that doesn't happen. The level 15 mobs are just now level 20 with you. So it's kind of weird. But another thing, too, is, like, the open world in retail is just so large now. And I don't know if you can have that same experience just because of how large the world is. Like, maybe if it's somehow more contained. Because, like... For players to really feel that progression and, you know, feel good in an MMO, an open world MMO, you want to have other players around, but, like, there's no shot there's going to be other players around when there's however many zones there are in retail. Like, I'm sure, I, I don't know, I haven't actually leveled a character in literally forever, but I would imagine, like, if you're just leveling a character right now, you probably don't run into other players, right? Uh, I well, obviously, I don't know if any of us know, but wouldn't it be a sharding issue? Like, it's basically the question of... Yeah, I'm sure you, that's you. Well, do you want to have a bunch of people around you? Like, if you're going to make, co like, leveling more difficult uh, and take longer, by having more people around you, which is another thing that makes this feel like an MMO, right? That also trivializes the content because, like, more people are killing things, you know? Uh, like, the best way you could tailor that to feel the best way possible would actually for you to be alone, but that's just, like, anti-MMO, right? So I think, like, balancing that entire thing. And, I mean, how do you guys feel about sharding in general? Like, do you feel like you should be constantly surrounded by people? Or, like, what they've done recently, it seems like, for performance issues is, like, it seems like it's limited to a pretty small number of people, right, when you level? Do you see a lot of people when you're leveling? I don't. I haven't leveled a character since... Like, Dragonflight launch, start. right? That's yeah. what I'm talking... Yeah. But even then, it's... Yeah, like, it didn't... It doesn't have that feel that, you know, TBC or I guess Wrath launch day had where you're, first of all, the server's just going down. I guess it did have that a little bit on the very first day of Dragonflight, but, uh, you you know, Howling Fjord is just full of people that uh, are killing all the mobs you want to try and kill, and it's annoying. So, I don't know. I mean, I think that the world, at least when I was leveling back in 10.0, 10.0.5, which I did over the course of a couple of months, I leveled all my characters... Um, almost all of them I leveled by actually questing as well. I, I didn't, I bought boost for like two of them through, you know, knock it hold or whatever. But, um, most of them, I actually just did the quests, you know, in free time. Um, the world felt, I want to say like medium full, like there were people around. It wasn't empty, but also in any given quest that I would probably not run into somebody, you know, killing all my mobs, for instance, or, like, multiple people killing all my mobs, I'd see, like, somebody off a few packs away or something like that. I don't know. that that That's how I remember it, at least. But I don't know how it's, like, now if you're leveling later in the expansion. Although, although with sharding, it should be... They should have, like, a, a density, and then most people should hit that, right? That's how sharding works? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering more along the lines of, like, players who are from one to current expansion right okay so if you're if, if you're in the old world Desire lore, i would imagine that that's got to be pretty desolate yeah you're definitely yeah. super alone and i i wonder how, how fast do you know how fast like none of guys like, listening to this none of us doesn't happen you i've boost had all a classes and max then... level since legion yeah 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 so you you just yeah or or if like you're making a new one at least for me like that thing's getting boosted 100 percent. like i'm not leveling from one uh but, like, how I wonder how fast that takes. Like, do you feel meaningfully powerful every level, or are you getting two levels a dungeon, you know? Like, how, how fast or slow that is? No one I, knows. I will no say um, something else, though, is that, like, Final Fantasy has, 
had the other answer to this for the longest time, right? Of, well, I guess aside from boosts, but it's like, if you don't want to buy a boost, you do just level through a 200 hour campaign or whatever, a 300 hour campaign. Now, if you want to play that game, right. And, Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of people get turned off by that. Like a lot of people stand by it too, but I personally, it's an option, right? It's not optional. Like the other option is to buy boost. So, well, yeah, 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 sort yeah, of option. the boost, option. Or... No, there is an option. There, there's like three levels. There's watch the 300 hour campaign. Right. And I mean, watch because like every single quest in that game is take this thing to this guy, loot this thing, take it to this person and then three minute cutscene. And that's that's the rotation throughout all of it. Um, and there's that there's do that. The the middle not buying a boost route is do that, but just skip every cutscene. Which I have done and can will tell you that is the most miserable experience ever, right? Because like, you know, they didn't put a lot of thought into questing. They put all the thought into the story and the cutscenes, and you know, so you're not intended to enjoy the game that way. But yeah, you're not going to catch me watching any cutscenes. So you do that, or you buy a boost. Um, but th- that that does kind of make me wonder. Like, we've all played a decent amount of MMOs, right? Like, like have you guys seen a game that does questing really, really well, or differently to like be discussed as you know, you know, something different or, or good. Like, I mean, you can, we were talking about final fantasy now. Right. Uh, but that, that's like a little different because if you've ever played final fantasy games, the majority of the people that enjoy those games, they're fully locked into the story, right? Like they watch from the beginning to end. They watch every cutscene. and final fantasy 14 is no different. It's like they, that is the reason you play that game, right? There's an end game, a really good end game in that game, but some people that doesn't even matter. Right. Uh, I don't think wow could pull that off. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think WoW just has to have it leveling sort of like uh, classic, really. Like, even though questing is not interesting or exciting in classic, it's really the character progression that makes it fun for a lot of classic players. It's like, why is classic popular? Well, it's because, like, you know, it's about the journey, right? Even though there's, like, not a whole lot of story behind it. Could you do As that for... in retail, though? Yeah, I mean, d- d- I agree. Like, should you yeah, change I mean, that's a retail to match classic? Because... I, well, am I mean, currently it, but not it would just be like leveling despite experience. having the option to. Yeah, but the leveling experience but, but that's just is like, worse. Yeah, because like, I'm just thinking like it would just be like an option, right? It's not like something that you would have to do. Okay, yeah. I mean, if it was an option in the sense of like you literally have like a mode you can choose, it's like, you know. I'm not even a mode. I mean, like right now, it's literally just like you buy a boost or you level, right? There's, there's like no. Right, yeah. Okay, so if we change the level side of that to slower i would hate it i, I like i i would want to have to buy bo- i don't like buying boost right now and i don't mind leveling because it's nice and quick and uh you know easy enough to do but basically the the change that you're proposing is that i spend an extra few hundred bucks every yeah, expansion i mean i i literally have never leveled yeah so yeah tbc well, like literally i've only boosted is this one of those things where classic and retail are on the same sub and it's completely reasonable that you would play one game for one thing and the other for the other. So why would you want to turn retail into classic or vice versa? Right. Well, except for the whole fact that uh season of discovery and classic plus are kind of doing that, but yeah, I, I think a large part of it is also like, there are a lot of people who do like leveling in this game and well, because you know, they, they prefer leveling with retail characters instead mm-hmm. of having to like, cause like, you know, a lot of people don't like leveling in classic because they don't like, playing a classic character right but like imagine yep. if you just play like a demon That's hunter me. and just have that leveling process still and uh i i do think it is good for new players if they have something that bridges the gap between uh having your character fully boosted and doing jumping straight into raids and m plus and like having something that's just leveling from one to max there's, there's got to be like you know something in between, and I don't know what that is exactly. Yeah, I am also not confident about the right way to approach this. I think I do think that the like the idea of there being some sort of like I don't think it would be good if they if they slowed down classic or retail leveling. I don't think I don't think that would be good. But you know, if there was some you know achievement or something that you could get by. And there kind of is, right? There's Lore Master. Like, you have to do Lore Master if you want uh, the Taiban mount. So you do have to do all the quests. But um, some, like, prestige leveling mode in WoW where you can just gain, <laughs> like, infinite prestige levels across your account. And you're just... It's, you're literally just going and doing side quests. And you're filling up a bar. Like, would that make people feel good? And maybe. Maybe that would that would be a dopamine delivery system. I don't know. 
well, it would be a crazy subjection of players. What of all of your all's experience playing MMOs and hopefully you've played many of them, what was your favorite time you've ever had leveling in an MMO? Ooh, CBC. oh dude, I, I've played so many. Also, I mean, my games are completely different. Well, what like, do you mean? I mean, like a lot of the MMOs I played growing up were leveling MMOs, like Ragnarok, Maple Story. Uh, more more recently would be like ESO and BDO. Like, How do those I, I compare really, to WoW? It feels really good in those games whenever you're like hitting levels I mean, that, like those are the entire game right the entire game is just you leveling your character getting stronger you getting gear on the way up and fighting stronger monsters that's that's like the entire gameplay loop there's no like end game there's no like oh it's just like okay. quickly rushed end game it, it's like a, it, those are completely different games but like those are like the type of MMOs that i grew up playing and that's what i think of when i think of mmos so yours is tbc dranos is like going from 60 to 70 yeah, or uh, even just 1 to 60 back in TBC the first time, because that's when I started playing, like, that that was a blast. I've recently, though, like, I played, uh, I leveled to max in Guild Wars 2. Not like, I, I didn't actually play all the way through all the campaigns, but that game, you, like, play through the first expansion, and then you hit max level, and then it's all kind of horizontal progression from there. Uh, and I leveled up through most of the first, like, the first expansion's worth of, or the first vanilla games worth of uh of story content and i thought it was pretty good i thought it was pretty well done but it didn't like hook me enough to keep playing through all the next expansions so i don't know i i don't yeah. think that there is a i don't think i just think i've kind of outgrown the desire to play a game to level you know I mean, that's still a thing that works. So, like, RuneScape kind of is that. Like, isn't RuneScape a game where you're just kind of always leveling your character? In I a think way? so. Like, yeah, RuneScape. Like, even even um, what was it? The New World, right? Amazon New World thing. Uh, oh man. Okay, the, that would be one of my answers for worst leveling experience of all worst time. Leveling. Oh, actually, you know what? You probably would have liked. Uh, well, I mean, Max, remember when um, you played Lost Ark in the beginning, getting from one mm -hmm. to uh tier it was like euphoric that was the, that was yeah. like some of the most fun i ever it was had just in my your life. character getting stronger the entire time right like you're yeah, doing new insane. raids new dungeons you're getting to like all the way up to like 1300 that that's yeah, like basically so the feeling they have to capture yeah but like how i feel like lost ark even like maybe people who are listening to this can understand bro the first three weeks of na release of lost ark was so insane it was like but the reason why is they had already had like two expansions basically but they in korea but they just like were kind of releasing three expansions at once that was like fast track dopamine okay and, but, but, oh, but, but man, think about a crazy. new wow player though like wouldn't a new player new wow player be able to go through yeah why can't they do that too? that's a good point yeah yeah like imagine if they were just like able to like just like go through all of these like go through tbc vanilla whatever. the historic dungeons and then like you're just constantly yeah. gaining like hella power and abilities and stuff and like yeah i mean if you could make anything feel like lost ark did when it first came out that would be insane but how My do you favorite... have that amount of power gain per hour and then spread it across more hours like you're gonna run out of power gain to do with wow systems right i mean that's that's kind of t and e's take right is yeah. they're like just spread it all out insane then I, I, I mean, if you go, if you can make it as good as Lost Ark, that sounds good. And getting new players in the game is a hard thing to do, uh, and they would know their abilities more because they would have to. Um, I, I didn't give my answer for my favorite time leveling, and I don't know if I, either of you played this game, but my answer is actually Wild Star. Um, oh yeah, I played Wild Star. I yeah, did play. I leveled through most of the way. I didn't actually make it to max in that game though. Oh, leveling! I've loved leveling in that game. I, I feel like that was one thing that that game did really, really well. It was kind of at end game, I think, when they were making their whole bit was they were making it for hardcore people. Like, like their commercials were literally saying like hardcore, hardcore. Like they're just like this is for the hardcore raider, hardcore gamer, and like totally missed the point that just like three percent of MMO players are people that are like that or much less. Uh, and they they had like some crazy attunement at max level and stuff. But like the actual leveling experience for me was super satisfying, and I remember it as fondly as anything else. Probably similar to you leveling in uh, BC. Uh, what is an what is an example of a game you guys have leveled in, and it's like this is the worst thing of all time? Final Fantasy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone through that experience yet. Yeah, I mean, okay, quick quick hack. If you're ever just so down bad for viewers, 
what you can do is you play through the Final Fantasy campaign, but you watch every cutscene, and there's this wandering group of like Final Fantasy Twitch viewers that just live to watch people watch their favorite story over again for the first time. Like it's like someone reacting to a song that you love or reacting to a TV show that you really like on YouTube, right? Those exist. It's just like that. That's the content they crave. You will get thousands of viewers watching you do this stuff. And then as soon as you're done with the story, they will be gone forever and they're just going to move on to the next person. But you can do that. Uh, but I, I couldn't, uh, the story just JRPG stuff isn't isn't for me. I just it's just totally not my thing. I, I can't get into it. I, I I'm not a fan of the storytelling and stuff. So I just I can't watch it. And if you try to play Final Fantasy, which does have a fantastic end game, very different from WoW, very good. But man, if you try to do the just turn in the breadcrumb quest and skip cutscene and then go to the next guy, it is tragic. Is that what you did, Dratnos? I yeah, I was trying to follow along with the story, and then I got so bored that I started skipping cutscenes, and I started doing the leveling while listening to a like three hour YouTube video that was like the lore of Final Fantasy A Realm Reborn. And so I was kind of getting like a, a abridged version, but I don't know. I didn't make it to the expansions where supposedly the story gets better, but I maybe at some point we'll try that. I don't know. It's, it's just so demoralizing. Like I, I don't want to not have fun for 60 hours to then potentially start having fun and yeah, I mean, also, like, that kind of storytelling I don't think would be for me. At least the way that it was very ham-fisted, you know, like, I don't know. The, it, it didn't it didn't strike me as actually particularly good writing throughout at least A Realm Reborn. Which, oh, you were in dangerous territory. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I don't, I don't think that's... I, from what I've heard, at least, I, I haven't played a game or, you know, I don't know it all about the story myself, but I, I have heard that's, like, a pretty common take that, like, it doesn't actually get good until later on. yeah. I don't think you're in dangerous territory yet. Well, no, know. he said he said that he thought the the writing was kind of bad. That's dangerous territory. Oh yeah, yeah, a, yeah. yeah. Well, the part that yeah. I played again to be clear, I've only played through. Uh, up, I like I I stopped playing. I've twice actually. I've twice started to play that game. Been like, okay, I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna see what everybody's talking about. I'm not gonna buy the boost because they all say you're not supposed to do that. And then I made it to past the first like the base game's quests, and then you have to start doing patch content right like you have to do 1.1 1 1.2 .1, 1.3 1 1.4 patch content and that's where it's lost me both times it's just too boring i can't i can't continue well did you guys level a new world medium yeah. amount and then again i also I quit new world. well before max level in that game wait did, did we all quit well before max level in that game I did you do as well game? game you didn't even start yeah it was yeah. what level did you make it to Dranos? like 17 or something i don't know i was i was playing for a day or two. Three. Yeah, I made it to 30. It was, I just, there's, there's this point where I just went back to town and I'm like, man, so I really am just grabbing. There are, were probably six quests in that game that just rotated in different parts of the map. Like they were actually the exact same thing. And it was just like, dude, I, there's just no way I could do this all the way to, to 60 with action RPG dungeons. You know, that's going to be action combat. It's pretty hard to pull off. Um, mm -hmm. But I did hear that that game made cool raid and dungeon content recently so shout out that i haven't i haven't seen or done it but i uh it, it, uh i've heard it's good so i heard the first month of new world was insane i feel kind of fomo out of that game because like i had like a bunch of friends who actually played and they were like oh man the first month was like so much fun and then it all went to shit yeah something that kind of sounds fun is if you were to do one of those like world pvp battles where like you have like 60 people in a discord channel and like you're actually strategizing and trying to beat another clan or whatever oh, like I that love those i could especially when it first comes out and it's not like super figured out like you know rbgs now are like scienced out like you know what to do like that, that when nothing's figured out that kind of stuff is incredibly fun uh that that i kind of feel like i maybe missed out on it but i don't know again see, just not see, my the thing kind of is game. mass pvp is actually never figured out like when we're talking about like that scale of pvp it's never figured out. It's always just like, it's just hype, you know. It's, it, chaos. it's just, yeah, it's chaos. But it's like chaos. But that's what makes it so fucking good. Like you're just out there. You're with your homies. You have like, eighty dudes, and you're just going at it with another group. And you know, like obviously, there's gonna be someone calling. They'll be like, all right, all right, push in here, push in right, push in right. And you just like hear all these like it's bombs hype. going. Yeah, and it's fucking yeah, it's fucking hype. Like I think that's I actually I I love mass open world PvP. 
Wait, did you guys but ever only play in other games? Did you guys ever play Swotor, like the Star yeah. Wars MMO? Yeah. You did? Uh, I, I never I was never into that one. Dude, I wanted to play it, but uh they so back when I was raiding in Cataclysm, I was raiding on a MacBook Pro. I was raiding on a laptop with a trackpad, and you could not download Star Wars on a Mac at that point. So that's why I didn't play it. But I was like super I really wanted to play it. Was it good? Was it any good? It was pretty good. Yeah, I mean it was like I, I would say of the story based MMOs I played, it had at least a pretty good story. Like I played a few of the I leveled each of the classes like had their own stories, which was kinda sweet and they genuinely did like a reasonably good job of disguising the fact that they had to sort of put this story on top of a huge long grind rather than actually like being pure story and like send you to the same planets as all the other classes and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was cool. I I didn't play too much group play or end game or anything in that game or at, at all ever, but it was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I did level, you know, several characters up again through the mid mid levels. So it was pretty good. Yeah. Dude, speaking of MMOs, uh, I guess, have we talked about the Riot MMO kind of being effectively I don't know if we canceled. did. I think we maybe mentioned like, it. Actually, I don't think it's officially canceled. I think it is indefinitely postponed, which definitely means that that thing's either not getting made or it will be 10 years until we hear of this again. So it's it's effectively dead. They said, yeah, they said, like, basically they threw out all the work, right? And it's like, yeah, this one... This wasn't gonna be better than a, than anything you could currently play, so we're starting from scratch, basically. Yeah, yeah I don't that even really think sucks it sucks to hear. Oh yeah, that would be a big big day because Riot Riot makes really good games. Uh, you know, someone will be like, "Well, what about this game, guys?" League of Legends. Le Legends of Runeterra is actually really really good. I just think it like missed the boat of uh, of card games. I love that game. Um. But like they they make really good games. Like you would just if you're an MMO player, you could just only hope that Riot would dip their hand into that. But it also makes me think that like, is there going to be another really well funded group that makes a really good MMO? And like why Riot to me had so much promise is they didn't have to do the thing that screwed so many other MMOs in the past. Wildstar uh, had investor uh, investors. And the investors eventually were just like, hey, it's kind of taken a long time, which MMOs do. And they were like, you guys have to just release this game, you know, before it was ready. And, you know, if you do that with an MMO, it's dead in the water. Riot doesn't have to do that. They could take forever to make this game as long as it was the right thing and it would make sense for them, right? So, like, seeing that coming, because I feel like everyone else is just going to run into that problem. You're going to get some VCs to to invest into your game they'll be like hey guys mmo it's gonna take a while they're like yeah yeah here take our money okay next year we need one more million dollars two more million dollars next year next year hey guys i kind of looking to get a return on my investment here it's gonna happen over and over again right like i wonder you know outside of big major companies like the future of mmos what does it look like with riot backing out i think is in an interesting thought the problem with really long development too is it starts to go out of trend. Like whatever ideas they were developing, like say something's been in the works since 2015, right? Like I'm just giving mm -hmm. a number 2015. Before like Mythic if they Plus had came out. Right, like if they had ideas from anywhere like between 2015 to like 2018, that's gotta be like mega out of date by now. And it's gotta be something that like probably yeah. wouldn't really do too well. But like at the time it would have been like, oh man, this was a great idea. So it's like, what do you do? Do you just go back to the, to the board? Like do you have to like cut it all? Like, I don't know. And that's actually sort of what's been happening with Ashes of Creation. I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with that. That I game was supposed to have like massive promises. Time, yeah. yeah, they've been having actually having a lot of updates. I mean, I still feel like that game is probably going to come out and be complete dog shit. But maybe I'm completely <laughs> yeah, wrong that's, about that's, it. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's where I'm at with it. But uh, they've actually been putting out updates still, surprisingly. There's that been, like, game some pretty promising stuff recently, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's gonna. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I would bet everything I own that that game is horrific. It, it, I, everything I've heard from the guy who's made that and just like all their very ambitious ideas, it just sounds like I'm being sold. It just sounds like a snake oil salesman. And like the stuff they had on their website initially, where it was like, you know, donate this much like supporter pack or something. It looked the website looked so sketchy. It was like, dude, this has to be a scam. I don't think it's a scam, but I would. Be very surprised if that ended up being anything uh, of worth. I, I hope did I'm get wrong some too. 
some star citizen vibes, right? Of yeah. Like, yeah. 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 This is not actually going to come out, but we're not going to come out and be anything like the ambitious vision that they presented. But yeah, I mean, MMO market, like it, it sucks, right? Like you, in order to actually be a successful game, you kind of have to have already been a successful game, right? Like, Yep. One of the things that you guys were talking about, about how the Lost Ark initial experience was so positive was like literally because the you know, Lost Ark 3.0 was the first version that released in, in NA, right? Mm-hmm. And they yep. they had had that time to like have a stumbling block. We talked about New World, the game that came out, had big problems. And now you, you, you say you heard there's good new end game. They, I'm sure they made a lot of changes. They've had an expansion or something to that game. Like, but nobody goes back to it, right? Like you missed the boat on the on the first launch for an MMO and it's disastrous because momentum is such a, a key uh, part of the game. And unlike when world of Warcraft launched the first time, there's not like the ability to launch the game and then have it get good over time. Right. Cause like you're up against retail. Wow. You're up against classic. Wow. You're up against final fantasy. And like these games are so well specialized at, being what a lot of the people who are playing them being exactly what those players want to play. Yep. That is just really, it's really hard space to like disrupt. Uh, and I think a big part of that is that the underlying like technology of the MMO, I don't think there has yet been an MMO that has delivered on our engine is better. Therefore our game is better. Sometimes you see that in other genres. Mm. That's something that has, but also in other genres, that's also like slowing down, yeah. right? And a lot of the games Big that time. people are playing, it's like, hey, I'm playing a MOBA. My game was created 15 years ago, right? I'm playing an MMO. My game was created 25 years ago. I'm playing a card game. Well, m- maybe you're playing Flesh and Blood, which came out a couple of years ago, but otherwise you're playing a game that was created 30 years ago, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! Or, or Magic or whatever. Like a lot of these things, it's not the case anymore like it was between 1980 and 1990 and then 1990 and 2000 where it's like, wow, this game is just doing things that the other games weren't capable of. And therefore like by default, it's better. That's just not true anymore. You're not, you're not just better than retail. Wow. If you're playing an engine, you know, unreal, the newest unreal engine, that's wow. Does everything fine that it needs to. It's not uh, deficient enough. I mean, obviously there are people playing wow that complain about that, right? Like obviously a lot of people complain about the, the age of the, the engine all the time, I guess, but Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter. Right. Like I don't think it matters enough for, uh, there to be an opportunity to come in with something that's like, we're wow, but modern. Well, I think that there's a lot of games that, you know, like Last of Us was a like a transcendent game. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, the graphics in this are crazy. The first Last of Us. And Last of Us 2 is also graphically nuts. And then over like all the 2010s, there was a big push on your game needs to look super realistic and stuff like that. And I think over the last couple years, at least what I've noticed is that, you know, it's gotten to a point where like, it's not going to look massively, massively better on consoles and PC. Uh, So graphics are kind of like, you want passable graphics, but really insane graphics do not make a bad game good. They make a really, really good game great or something like that. Like it can enhance something that's already great, but it's not that, uh, right? But like, wow, or any kind of MMO is, you know, how how are you going to actually break that? But I don't don't even think it's an MMO thing. I think in all games, it's, it's like, gameplay now and what the game is at its core is so much more important than graphics and i don't think it was like that in the mid 2010s i think there's so much more emphasis on on good graphics and you mentioned wow like i had this issue when i played final fantasy where i was playing final fantasy i thought that game looked fine and i thought wow looked fine but like there's different and i just remember that all the, my final fantasy viewers were just like dude wow i hate the way wow looks like it's just like so old and ancient and then like i have wow viewers that are like I hate Final Fantasy. It just looks cartoony and I just don't like that. And it's just like, it's just a different art style, you know? Like, it's nothing different than just a different art style. Uh, And WoW WoW looks a lot better. I have some issues with WoW's performance, especially with more people around you. But, uh, like, the graphics, I don't think has ever really mattered to me. Yeah, I mean, it's never really been about graphic fidelity nowadays. Because if you think about it, some people are even, like, against how photorealistic some games are like i don't know if you've seen but like some some games like sometimes people are like oh this is not really it i think it's more about the art direction and design because like if you look at elden ring for example elden ring is like such a beautiful game i absolutely love how the game looks but the graphics are not that good like the graphics are really kind of outdated but because of like how 
beautiful everything looks in that game. It it, it really like stands out compared to some more. I guess you're right. I've never thought games, about that. Like Cyberpunk. Yeah, like I, I don't know if you've looked at uh, Elden Ring graphics, and it's been like a criticism from like you know those like journalist type people who are like ah, oh, being snobs saying how Elden Ring game doesn't journalist. look good. Yeah, game journalist, and they're kind of right. Like like the like, graphics are really not up there. It's not that high quality, but in terms of how the game looks, I mean, the game is fucking beautiful. Well, I just want to say one more thing before we kind of move on to the Patreon question, uh, which is, I just want to point out the thing about graphics. I don't care about, gra like, if a game is great and, like, it's just Minecraft graphics, like, I don't care as long as it uh, is an awesome game. I'm, like, gameplay over everything. But the last thing I wanted to ask for the Patreon question is in 20, we're in 2030, six years from now, are the games kind of still what they are. It's like WoW dominates. If you want a JRPG version of WoW, an MMO like Final Fantasy 14 is still kicking. Like, is there is there another game that breaks into that mold? Is that even possible at this point when someone like Riot is backing out? I will say, I don't think MMOs are as outdated as people might think. Because I know it's a pretty common sentiment that like, oh, there's never going to be another big MMO and blah, blah, blah. Because, like, when we saw Lost Ark launch, that was a fucking insane launch. Like, it had literally, like, a million and, like, a half concurrent oh, true. users. And New it, this was too. before the bots, by the way. Like, everyone's going to be like, oh, but the bots. Like, yeah, but obviously the well, bots World happened did later the same on. Thing. But, like, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, like, on, like, the first week of the game launch, there were, like, millions of players who really wanted to play the game. Because, like, you know, everyone was, like, hungry as fuck for a new MMO and... I genuinely think that, like, if there is a game that is good enough and that can satisfy a good amount of players, it will, like, capture and it will be able to take off. But the problem is, like, you know, MMOs, we've talked about this last week, it's so hard to satisfy MMO players because MMO players have had so many different experiences. It's not like FPS games, for example, like, they were super simple, right? It's just, like, have good clicking heads and, you know, like, all that stuff. But uh, MMOs, like, everyone wants different things. And we've been talking about it this episode, too. Like, some people want slower leveling. Some people want faster leveling. Some people want more emphasis on the end game. Some people want more PvP. And there's just, like, so much divisiveness in MMOs that it's, like, super hard to capture a wide audience. Yeah. That's I, what I think. I think there is a chance that a new game could come into the scene. But I do think the ride MMO was the one that was most likely to, like, join or dethrone wow at the top that um and the chances it doesn't seem like that's likely to come out by 2030 if at all um although yeah, maybe maybe 2030 is like the early end of when it could come out at this point i don't know um i don't know i wouldn't write off the next six years of people trying to make mmos but i think it is unlikely i think it's like 30 percent or something and you've seen the like sub numbers from WoW. Let's just assume the World Soul Saga, which right now people are really excited for. Like, is WoW in 2034 still just fucking kicking out expansions? And you know, I mean, you would if you would have asked me that in 2014, I would have been like, in 10 years, like I don't know, like I guess WoW 2 will be out or this other thing will happen. Like, I just don't. It's just inevitable. And also, I feel like they already are telling you the answer. If you have seven million subs, man, subscribers are the most broken thing ever because people will just forget to renew them even if they're not playing it so you just you just get make infinite money hack like why would you ever cancel something that you have a recurring sub for you're always going to create content for it yeah definitely no way that wow stops making content with these kind of sub numbers yeah all right is that all right. uh patreon question the... yep from uh tribonius that says hey there boyos i hope my question reached you all well I'm writing you guys today in search of advice. I've been getting, I've been interested in getting back into mythic raiding in the War Within, but I haven't been in a progression guild since Castle Nathria. I started raiding in Legion, was on and off during BFA, and spent the first half of Shadowlands co-GMing a new guild, getting up to Mythic Sludge Fist our first tier. Most of our leadership, including myself, quit in Sanctum. That guild went on to get Cutting Edge in Sanctum and every tier after, up until this current one where they disbanded. <laughs> The new GM was Whoa. sleeping with half the officer team, and her husband was the main tank. What a parenthetical. My no goodness. Way that's real. 
That's good Holy lore. shit. Well, dude, oh just imagine God. just some people or maybe this is on the screen where they're like, yeah, and they've been getting until they disbanded. And then the parentheses explains the disbanded. It's the most fucking crazy thing that it could possibly be. So I've lost any relevant connections to find a new guild, and I don't have any relevant logs to use to apply to any new groups. Any of my logs are pre-Shadowlands. Uh, Pre-Shadowlands have been lost to time, and I spent most of Castle Nathria as hanking. During Dragonflight, I mainly spent time getting 3k IO every season, pugging ahead of the curve, but that's about it. I'm wondering what I should be doing while waiting for the new expansion to drop in order to find a new guild to play with. Thank you for reading, and I appreciate any feedback. Okay, um... There's a lot to dissect here. Can, can we? Do, sorry, do we? Do we start with the with the with how their guild disbanded, or do we? Sure. Yeah. I mean, bro, you it's got to be tough to be the husband, right? Like you're just tanking for your guild, whatever, and then you find out that your wife's been sleeping with the people that you are near and dear to, your officers. That's <laughs> fucking insane. How do you that's rock like... a guild that's all that close together geographically as well, right? Like, uh, oh, I, I, don't that, that. That. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it, but. You don't believe you think it's not true. Yeah, it does it does sound so ridiculous that there's like no fucking way that's true. But like why would they say that? It, yeah. It could be one of those like, you know, my, my uh my cat is on fire period back kind of situations, but it, I don't it's know. Really maybe specific. <laughs> and I wonder it's so funny. I wonder if the people in that guild, if that's even remotely true, are probably listening to this and being like, Oh yeah, that's maybe we'll get a comment and they're like, Yep, that happened. Yeah, yeah, please no maybe names. They're just like e dating around. I mean, that could be a thing too. But like actually, just like having all these people that are around it, that that are it, it wasn't guild, cheating. Better. It was sleeping, sleeping with. with. Yeah. Holy. F I mean. Wow. Okay, like there are some parts of the country where you could maybe proc, like five out of twenty people within, like California. <laughs> How big is the officer team? New York. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like North. It would be, it would be Northeast. Team? That's a good yeah, question. Yeah, it, it would be northeast, right? It would have to be somewhere like where you can drive between all those big cities: Philadelphia, Boston. That that, that would be crazy. But like, can you imagine just New York? Like, are, are the couples living together? Uh, like, is, is the wife just like driving around states? Well, yeah. I mean, pe people. Well, can what's cheat going on? That I'm not an expert in the logistics of this, but I assume that if you're you know a couple hours away or something, like you, know, you could find a weekend or something. That Dude. somebody's out of town or something. I don't okay. know. Okay. Let's move back to this actual question. But some interesting thing in the comments is any interesting anecdote you guys have similar to that that has happened in your all's guild. We would love the love the tea, either in the Discord or in the YouTube comments. Um so getting back to Mythic Rating, isn't it just I mean, if you have experience co GMing a guild to kill Mythic Sludge Fist, there's a good chance that a guild you apply to has that. The logs are the logs are something, man, you would need, you would need to, I don't know, just like level up a character, farm a bunch of crests and just go, go crank some heroic raids and yeah, I mean, I this know. person says they've been pugging well, ABC, yeah. so if you've been doing that and doing good damage in those runs, you're chilling. Like yeah. those logs should be sufficient to get into a medium-ish mythic guild if you're, you know, if they need what you have mythic experience. And then if those logs are good, it shows that you are up to date with currently how to play your class and stuff like that. And then. You just have to get in an interview. My, my advice for this is always like Mythic Plusing is a good way to find a guild. Like you just find your way into a guild's Mythic Plus group, do well, and then they just invite you to the guild. That seems like a thing. That's pretty time intensive, though. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if that's a route. Yeah, I would say like, you know, if you have been pugging and see if you have people that you've added to your friends list, like I would imagine like maybe you might have added some people in your friends list during the time of pushing keys or whatever you've been doing and maybe try hitting them up, ask them if they are looking for a DPS or whatever the hell you're playing. My advice would be you're probably not going to get into the guild that you're going to want to get into just because you don't have recent experience. Like I would imagine most guilds probably wouldn't give you the chance of joining their guild. Assuming they like, you know, it's like a cutting edge guild or whatever. So you probably have to like start smaller and then guild hop but that's my personal advice i don't know how you guys would approach it yeah i i would say like the castle nathria logs are pretty likely to be worthless when it comes to like a lot of guilds at this point like my guild for instance will very much discount any logs going back that far so really like if someone gave you logs from castle nathria of them doing 
like a hundreds on every boss, I feel like that would be relevant at any point. It's okay, rating is an average. Like some average loss. If it's a hundred, yeah, like, even if it's like ninety three, nineties. Yeah, yeah, it's like. I mean, even then, like, 93s show that your con the game hasn't changed enough since Shadowland to show that... The thing is, is you can't replicate passion level. Like, yeah. I don't know if anyone else in this call or listening to this can relate to this, but it's happened to me multiple times where you've recruited someone that you used to raid with, and you're like, man, that guy used to be such an insane player. Then you bring them back, and that passion level isn't there, mm -hmm. and they're kind of mailing it in, and they're nowhere near the same player they used to be. And you just get tricked by that. So like old logs can kind of have that issue too. Yeah, that's that's bit us a couple of times as well, where it's like this person either like we know they used to be good, but that past a certain amount of tiers of separation, that just has stopped correlating well enough with whether they're currently good uh, for us to. I mean, like you know, obviously, I'm not saying we would never look at stuff that old, but we pretty much ignore it. It's it's close to ignored. Now that's going to be less true as you get lower down the guild ladder, right? Like. Uh, if you've got right, yeah. if you've got great logs from Castle Nathria, and you're trying you're you know Mythic Sludge Fist you were doing, and you're applying to a guild right now that's five out of nine or something like that, like that, I assume will still be will still carry some weight. But I do think that you know the I would look at the AOTC runs you've been doing, and if you've not been like using all your consumables, not been doing good damage in those runs, I would say like go into next week's AOTC or whatever. And go as go like you're you know applying right to treat it like a like a guild application run, uh, and then use those logs as guild application material. And um, if you look for guilds that are looking for whatever you're playing, try to play something that guilds are looking for as well. Uh, then I think that you should be able to to parlay that into an invite into yeah a mid rank mythic guild. But I say that as somebody who has talked to a lot of people that are in your spot, but having not actually personally been there in years. So, uh, I actually don't know, for instance, right now, like as we're approaching season four, I don't know if it's a good or bad time to be a candidate, right? Like I hear Ooh. a lot of guilds are dying, but, or that would like make in, it a good time, right? Which would make it a good time. I mean, it, it's yeah. well, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, it's like getting a foot in, you know, having something at least. Cause like, if you're able to get something going that way, like once war within begins and, maybe you can guild hop to a better guild because mm -hmm. chances are you're not going to get into a guild that you want to get into. Like you're probably going to end up with a guild that you're probably not as satisfied with. Like, I, I don't know what this person is aiming for, but I would imagine some of that experience would want like close to a cutting edge, if not a cutting edge guild, but you would probably have to settle with like more of a mid rank guild, like Drannel said, something like that's like maybe on Smolderon currently or whatever, and probably go from there. I also, yeah, I mean, if your goal is to have a guild in the War Within, you're definitely going to be a, in a much better spot trying to get into a guild now than you are right before the War Within comes out, for sure. So do that as soon as possible if you really, really care about it. Also, just this is actually kind of a question for me. Wh where would you even start with that? If you wanted to apply for a guild, where would you even go? Me personally, I've just used Trade Chat. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you guys. Like, I, I'm probably the one that has like most recent joining guilds experience but for me it's been trade chat followed by friends like friends that are in a guild or like you know recommendations yeah but you're like a famous streamer guy like well what, no but like... i mean okay but i'm talking about like before i was streaming right like obviously like back in bfa which i guess is kind of long ago how long was that that's like god damn that's like what almost six years ago four years like before like during that time i was in a streamer and nobody knew who the hell i was i was just like some random dude and I was literally just joining trade chat guilds, and outside of trade chat guilds, it was just people that I knew. I would have like people that I used to do keys with. They hit me up. They're like, "Oh, you want to join our guild? We need a DK or something." And I'd be like, "Oh yeah, sure." Man, I'm looking on Raider.io right now. You can like yeah. hit browse for browse players or browse guilds, and if you hit browse players, like you're in the guilds position. They just see a bunch of players and you can say what your main and off spec is or what classes you play, what your role is. And then like you can see all their logs in one spot and their availability. Like maybe maybe it's this. I don't know. So yeah, it's probably those two. In theory, I think Raider IO, yeah, like Raider IO, Warcraft Logs, Wild Progress all have recruitment systems of some kind or another. Most of the times, I think in those cases, rather than like actually formally using the Raider IO recruitment, you, usually people are just like, you know, the, go to the guild page and it's like, oh, DM this officer on Discord or whatever, uh, or, you know, su submit an app here. 
Um, I know as well there's a big recruitment Discord. If you Google like WoW recruitment Discord, um, there's one that's got like 30,000 people in it or something. Um, I think that's, that's got to be better common... than anything else. Yeah, I, I, th and I suspect there's more than one as well. Uh, again, not something that I have done recently, but I, I, a lot of times when I talk about this, people in my chat say that that's where they found their guild. So um, I think that could be, especially for the, you know, if you're actually trying to not just find a guild and trade chat to have a guild, but like, you know, you're willing to move servers and you're looking for a guild that is rating your hours and doing the kind of progress you want to do. I think that's a good messaging bet. people in the guild too. That's a yeah, big hundred percent. I've had They're... people message me a lot of times in like guilds I've been in, and they were like, "Hey, do you have an officer on?" Or like, "Hey, uh, who can I talk to to join your guild?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just I just looked at it. Yeah, it's the first thing that shows up when you Google WoW recruitment Discord. Uh, it's the top link, and there are a ton of people in here. So that is definitely the right place. All right, cool question. Um... Let us know. Send us in your story. See if you can compete with the... There's something about it that's just one sentence as well that makes you so curious as well. Like, man. Yeah, I... it's like, oh, yeah, this is just what happened in the Guild Disbanded. Yeah, I am... Oh, yeah. I already forgot about that. Wow. Dude, Dude. shout out that husband. What, what, yeah. a, what a tough time that must have been. <laughs> like, all your friends betrayed you and your wife. Oh, my God. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. Um yeah give us comments though give us comments any uh, let's top that let's any one of you guys have you experienced don't make anything up either any of you guys have experienced something worse give us don't use names but give us the sauce all right potty you later pod bye yep pod bye you.